Hello, writers. Come write with me. My name is Michaela Greenwood. I create worlds for mind adventures. Welcome to my channel, Write with Michaela. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can go on this journey with me. Today is Tuesday, and we are going to add to your cave story. I believe I said this would be part six, but I went back and I counted and this is part seven. Wow. Can you believe it? For reference, <coughs> part one was in season one and it was episode 25. Parts two, three, four, and five were in season two. They were episodes 15, 25, 35, and 43 respectively. Part six was season 3.1 episode 5 and today is part 7 which is episode 13. In part 6 I added some fantastical details. A guide appeared to Zalira and encouraged her to practice the old ways and Zalira tried to send a message to Missant. Of course there was a question that automatically entered our minds where did the children slash gnomes go during the night? We don't know. In my cave, my character is not out yet. So my character is still exploring and learning things. So my character is still looking for a way out and for something to eat other than the mushrooms she thinks are poisonous. The instructions for this week, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> for this writing prompt are very much the same as last time or for part six. Continue exploring the cave or if your character got out, then explore the surrounding area and also check on the people looking for you. Remember, this is the middle of the story and it, it needs some meat unless you want a short story, which you can do. That's fine. At this point, I have a little over 6,000 words, and my genre is 80,000 to 120,000 words. So you see, I need quite a bit more. <clears throat> uh, a minimum of 74,000 more words. All of all, remember that you need interrelated events, and you need to build to a climax. So we're trying to do all of that. Right now, we're just kind of having fun. We're playing around. We're adding pieces. But when you, when you go, you know, and edit, then we'll, you'll have to do more stuff. So just relax. Have fun adding to your cave story. Right, right now, I have titled the story The Cave. And I'll change that later when editing. So if that's the title you have for your cave story, don't worry about it. it the title will come later. You'll be like, oh, I should call this. You just will know. And maybe maybe my title might be Zalitter. Or it might be, you know, The Fight Against Maldrake. Or who knows what I'm going to title it. So don't worry about such details right now. Just relax. Have fun. When editing later on, way later when I'm editing, if I find something isn't interrelated, then I will either tie it in or I will edit it out. But we're not editing yet, so we don't have to worry about that yet. So, pause the video and add a scene or two to your cave with having fun doing it. Then come back and I will read my additions today. Welcome back, writers. Let me read what I added. Zalira quietly sat up. It didn't seem like the children were awake. Of course, she didn't know if they were pretending or not. But she decided to try to meditate. Meditation was one of the ways to access the old ways. It was access to knowledge and foresight. It was a way to connect to nature and guides. Zalira sat for a few minutes going through her mind about last time. In many ways, she wanted to, 
dismiss things. But here, she sat in a cave. She wondered if Missant got her message. And how would she know if she received it? She really didn't want her team to search for her. Then, suddenly, she realized that if she were away for any length of time, her team wouldn't believe she was herself. They would lock her in a cell for several days to see if Maldrake's people had done anything to her. And that would be after they ran scan after scan on her to make sure Maldrake couldn't track her to, the compound, to their compound. Then a thought zipped through her mind. Maldrake wouldn't have to implant anything in anyone if he had the technology to read people's thoughts. The tech industry was very close to that technology before the war broke out. They had experiments and the people involved confirmed their thoughts. But some people believed that the people running the experiments brainwashed the participants to say what the computer said they thought. There were cases where several who personally knew the person said that the person never thought anywhere, anything near that. But the text just said the family and friends didn't really know the person. Valera shook her head to herself and told herself to focus. She needed to get out of the cave, and right now it seemed like the water was the best way out. Still, the slide had twisted and turned, so she didn't know direction at all. And she didn't want to start swimming the wrong direction and lose her breath. Missin and the rest of the girls in her room went to breakfast. Breakfast wasn't much more than some rehydrated food. After they got their food, they sat to a table. Each was thinking through things, with at least a couple thinking about the thoughts or dream that Missin had last night. Brambert came up to their table and slid in a seat. He whispered, We have a group to go around the marshes and look for Zalira. Anyone that wants to join us, we're leaving after lunch. Missant looked around. She whispered, Zalira is out of the compound. Yes, confirmed Brambert. We are going around the marshes to look on the other side of the compound for her. Missant was about to protest again, but she glanced around the table and she saw Curl Kilry shaking her head no. Brambert leaned in and whispered in an even lower voice, Some of us don't trust the commanders, and we suspect that Maldrake will, quote, find us soon. Teresha whispered, Who all is going? And how are we keeping it from the commanders? Brambert told them that he had spoken with some of the people on the map teams, and he had around 20 people that were on board. He also stated that they may not want to return to their hideout because their side would just throw them in jail when they returned. Then Brembert told them where to meet if they wanted in, and he got up with his breakfast and headed to another table. <clears throat> the girls all looked at each other. And there were eight of them, but they didn't want to discuss things in such an open space. Five of the girls wanted to go, but that would be packing quite a bit because they wouldn't be planning on returning. Solera opened her eyes and saw the children waiting on her. The boy asked what she was doing, and the girl said it looked like she was asleep sitting up. Zalira admitted that she was just thinking of what the best thing to do was. The boy said they could show her more of the cave, so Zalira agreed. Zalira carefully watched as the boy watched the boy as he opened the shield that protected the cave or the chamber. So. Um, she didn't recognize the symbols, but she told herself it looked like a number pad and to just memorize the sequence like it was numbers. 
She put in her mind 912876. She told herself to watch again if they came back and the boy put the shield back up. They slipped down the dark corridors until they got to where the sound of the iron gate opening or closing was getting louder and louder. This made Zalira nervous. But then they climbed some stairs and the boy warned her of a hole in the floor. He whispered to her that she could lay down on the floor and look through the hole at the creature she described. But all Zalira could think about was when she was helping the boy get out of the water and something pulled her in. Zalira nervously looked at the children, but she didn't move near the hole. Down in the hole, she saw the red light and she saw the creature pass beneath the hole. Zalira backed up and looked at the children. She immediately knew she could not trust them. She whispered, what are we doing here? Are you... She stopped herself. She didn't want to give the children any ideas. The boy asked, Are we what? Solera thought quickly. Are you the creature's caretakers? The boy shook his head, and the girl said they felt sorry for the creature because the cave trapped the creature down here. Solera looked at the girl. If the cave trapped the creature down here, then it also trapped them. She asked the next obvious question. Who or what trapped the creature in here? You said the cave. But caves don't trap people in and of themselves. Then she thought that the children had said they heard the cave, but they didn't know where it was or what it did. Granted, they weren't showing her the gate now, but the sound was louder. Something wasn't right. The girl said, the same people that trapped us and trapped you also trapped the poor creature here in the cave, in this cave. The boy was eyeing Zalira. Zalira was not ready to think that the creature was poor, but... This thought ran across her mind. What if Maldrake did something to a person or an animal to make the creature? Then she thought, if I learn that's the case, I might adjust my thinking. The hole in the floor still made Salida nervous, but she asked her next question. What about the creature in the water? Was it also put here by them? We don't know said the boy. Zalira motioned to the hole and whispered, Well, I've seen enough here. What else are you showing me? The boy eyed her for a few minutes and then headed down the stairs. Missin and the other girls who were going had minimal supplies and belongings. They met Brambert and 16 other people, including Cleric and Commander Dyson. Apparently, three people dropped out when they learned that Commander Nyson was going, but Brambert quickly hushed the rest of them, and they left their compound on the side that was farthest from Maldrake's compound. After they got outside and were inside some woods, Brambert told them that Commander Nyson suspected Commander Thurnall set Zalira up, but he didn't know that for sure. However, that's why he was going. Between breakfast and lunch, Missant had discussed things with the other girls, including sending a message to Zalira, but none of them knew how. Now, Commander Nyson gathered the 22 people in a tighter circle. He told them that Commander Thurnall suspected Zalira of practicing the old ways, and early on he had heard that Maldrake's biggest fear was about someone who knew the old ways and that Maldrake wanted to eliminate them first. He then told them that he suspected Grant of having access to the old ways, or at least he felt he saw Grant meditating, which could be a sign. Commander Nyson then told them that he was suspicious when Commander Thornall told him which part he was sending Zalira to do, but he listened to Commander Thornall's reasons. Commander Nyson sighed. I have more information, 
But let's get farther away first. After Commander Nyson's group walked another 30 minutes, they stopped and sat in a small open grove. Commander Nyson pulled out a book, and he read some of it to them. The book talked about the old ways and how to access them. Access them. After hearing what Commander Nyson read, the girls glanced at Missant. But Missant still did not share the message with the larger group. Finally, Zalira and the two children arrived back in the chamber with the shield, and the boy pushed in the same code, 912876. Zalira was happy, and she was tired. They sat down, and the children pulled out their mushrooms to eat. They suggested that Zalira eat some of hers. Although Zalira was hungry, she said without thinking, I can't eat these mushrooms. They're poisonous to humans. What? yelled the boy as he changed back to a gnome and grew in size. The girl pulled on his sleeve and he quickly reverted back. Then the boy and girl quickly walked through the shield. Solera sighed. She didn't know what to do. She would wait a few minutes, but she didn't want them to go get the creature and bring it to her. Solera sighed again. The children had walked her all around the cave, and she wasn't sure she could find her way herself. But she felt her best option was the water. After a few minutes, she would try to find the water. Okay, writers, that is the end of my edition today. Several things are happening. Still, no one knows about the time limit for the robot being off that I told you all about. I will have to work that in somehow or somewhere. Maybe next time we pull our caves out, we can peek in on the enemy to see if we can learn anything. I have set this up so that I can peek in on Grant and see where he is and what he is going through. So it'll be an easy transition for me. Of course, there are lots of questions. Now we don't know where the children went this time. They, I mean, they left at night and came back, and now they left again. And we don't know where they went. We don't know when Missant will share the message she felt she received, or if she will. We don't know if Commander Thurnall is or has betrayed them, or if anyone betrayed them. We don't know if... Solera will find the water again, and if that will be the way out. There's lots of questions, lots of questions. That's, that's how you go to the next part. When you, when you feel like you're stuck, you go back and you read, and you find these questions. It's like, okay, well, what about this? What about this? And then you have to answer the questions, or maybe you have to go back and edit some of the stuff that you did. I've found a couple of things that I would like to edit that we already read today, um, to kind of smooth it out and stuff, but um, that's how you go on is you, you read it, you find your questions, and then you, e you either edit the previous passage to kind of clarify things or smooth it out, or you write a new scene. Now, if you watch the episode where I talked about weaving a blanket, I, I gave an analogy of, of writing a story and weaving a blanket. You will realize that I have a lot of strings to weave in, especially as I mentioned Grant, because that's another string. What happened to Grant? We know that, you know, what he went in there and he's captured and Zalira is supposed to go rescue him. Where is he? What's he doing? Is, is Maldrake experimenting on him? What's going on? So we have that string just kind of dangling there and it's not woven in yet and now the big group has left the compound and they left Commander Thurnall and they don't intend to go back. So now we have two groups, the Commander Thurnall's and Commander Nyson's group. So those, those are strings to, to weave in because if you don't weave them in and you don't do something with them, then your readers are going to be going, what happened to, I, I don't know. And they'll just be wondering that. And by the end of the story, you certainly don't want them wondering that. You don't have to weave it in right away. You know, your blanket design is your choice. Your writing and your weaving are your choice. 
So you don't have to read it, weave it in right away, but you need to answer all questions or all possible questions by the end of the story. You don't want loose ends at the end. So we'll we'll work on that. I hope you've enjoyed this so far. Leave a comment below on if you were Zalira, would you have laid down on the floor to look through the hole at the creature? I mean, some of us are just so curious. You know, somebody says, oh, there's a tornado and get away from the glass. And everybody wants to go look at the tornado. And, and they don't necessarily think that they're going to be in danger. So they, they will go look and instead of, you know, get into an inner room or what have you. So... Sometimes our curiosity or our human nature will make us do things that we kind of know that we shouldn't be doing, but we're so curious and we don't think we're going to get hurt that we go do it anyway. So would you have laid down on the floor and looked through the hole at the creature? Did you want to see that it was the same creature? Did you, you want to see the, the chamber or the cave where the, the part of the cave where the creature was? Did you want to see if there were bones in there? Did w Would you... As a person, have laid down and looked through the hole in the floor. Maybe you said, I probably can't fit through that hole, so I can lay down and look. And, you know, because I didn't tell you how big the hole was. So, you don't know. In your story, it could be big, it could be small. So, leave a comment on would you have laid down and looked in, in there and see. Also, leave a comment on if you were missing or one of the others. Would you have left with Brambit, Brambert to look for Zalira? Maybe if you knew about the message Miss It received, you would have left. But what about the other people who didn't know about the message? I mean, Brambert gathered like 16 other people. And they, they're just leaving because they, they want to find Zalira. But they don't know anything about the message. So would if you were part of Missin's group, some of the girls, would you have left? And if you were... The other people, the map people, would you have left? So just leave that in the comments as well. And I guess I've already mentioned this, but I hope you realize that we can check in on Commander Thurnall. And we don't know if he's an enemy or he's betrayed us or not, so we can find that out. And that's something your reader would want to know. So I hope you realize we can check in on him. And we can check in on the people in the underground later to see what they think of the missing people. Maybe maybe they decide that they're not going to throw them in jail. They they need these people because they're, they're, you know, getting fewer and fewer of them. So they can't afford to throw them in jail because they need people to go do these missions. So we can look in on them and see what their thoughts are later. It's all just fun stuff. You are the creator. You, as the writer, are the creator. You get to create the whole world, the whole scene. You can create the cave. You can create the marshes around you, the enemy's compound. Whatever you decide. I've decided these few things. Whatever you decide, you could put in there. I don't know what your creature... If you had a creature in your cave, maybe your creature was more lizard-like instead of bear-like. It's all your choice. This is just fun stuff. You get to play all day, every day that you write. Join me Friday for Eleni's Bride, Breaking Point, Chapter 6, A New Way to Live. And join me Tuesday for another writing prompt or some jargon. I'm thinking about giving a setting. I was in the car with my husband the other night. Perfect setting. Of course, I could add to it. And then if I set that up and let us take it from there, that would be great. But maybe we need some jargon in between writing prompts because we had a writing prompt last week and we had this writing prompt this week. So maybe we do some jargon, take a little break, and we'll come back and do the setting uh, uh, the next time. Right, we'll see. Don't forget to visit my website, buymckella.com the buy is by not bui it's one of your hama phones they sound the same buymckella.com and read some character bios if you hit like and subscribe and hit the bell notification then we will continue to write together 
Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your participation. If you know someone who would like this video, then please share it with them. This is McKella with Write With McKella. Bye for now.